The principle of moments states that a system will be balanced when the total clockwise moment about its pivot is equal to the total anti-clockwise moment about its pivot. Remember that a moment is the turning effect caused by a force, which depends both on the size of a force and how far away it is from a pivot. The principle of moments tells us when these moments will or won't cause an object to turn. This is important for things like scales, where we need a way of checking whether or not two weights are the same. Here, each scale is attached to a bar, which can rotate around a pivot in the centre. If we put a weight on the right scale, this will pull down on the right side of the bar at the top and give it a clockwise moment. Then when a weight is also on the left scale, this pulls down on the other side of the bar to give it an anti-clockwise moment. Then if the scales don't tilt because of these moments, it must mean the two moments are equal and the system is balanced. The principle of moments is a very important idea that comes up in most exam questions about moments. So let's see how it works in more detail. First, let's look at situations with more than two forces contributing to a moment, since moments can come from multiple forces acting on the same object. We'll look at a simple plank of wood attached to a pivot at its centre and consider five perpendicular forces acting on it at different points along its length. Each force will create its own moment around the pivot. So how would we apply the principle of moments here? Well, we can sum up the total moments in clockwise and anti-clockwise directions. This is similar to how we would add up and combine forces when they act in the same direction. So we can sort these moments into two sets. First, the clockwise moments, caused by forces pushing up from the left or down from the right. We can then combine their effects to determine the total clockwise moment. And then we can do the same for the anti-clockwise moments, caused by forces pushing down from the left or up from the right. Again, we can add up their effects to determine a total anti-clockwise moment. The object will then rotate in the direction of the greater total moment. Again, this is similar to forces, where the object moves in the direction with the largest total force. So in this case, we have a larger total for the clockwise moments, which means that the plank will rotate clockwise. For your exams, you could be asked to explain what direction something will rotate when multiple forces are applied to it, but also what will happen when the total moment in both directions is the same. If the total moment in both directions is the same, then no rotation will occur. Again, this is similar to what happens when forces in equal and opposite directions cancel each other out. Let's look at the plank again with a different set of forces. Again, we can sort these forces into those that cause clockwise and anti-clockwise moments. This time, if we add up the moments in each direction, we'd find that we get the same total in both directions. This means that the overall clockwise turning effect is cancelled out by the overall anti-clockwise turning effect. So the resulting moment is zero, and hence the plank will not rotate. Thanks for watching. If you want to take your GCSE revision to the next level, head over to launchpadlearning.com and check out our smart learning platform that's been designed to get you top results in your exams. We cover your whole specification and make revision fun with interactive quizzes, easy to follow videos and more. You'll be kept motivated by your own AI tutor who's here to support you every step of the way. To check it out for yourself, click here. Or click here to keep watching a selection of the videos from our full GCSE physics course. See you there.